Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James, and in this video, let's talk about From Season 3, Episode 9. So when the episode was over, my first thought, I guess, the first thing, I think I even said it out loud. I watched this episode alone. There wasn't anybody else in the room, but I think I said aloud, they're just stringing us along. They're just stringing us along. And I did like the episode, don't get me wrong. I liked the episode, but I don't know about Revelations, you know, as far as, yes, we were told some stuff, but we were told kind of a couple of little things almost every episode or something, you know, it's like, hey, we're going to answer part of your question or one of your questions, but we're going to give you three more. And that's not Revelations, man. I think I might have said it out loud after the boy in white scene with Victor and the axe in the tree. I mean, right after that scene, I'll probably said it out loud, too. They're just stringing us along. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you guys got, you can say it was totally Revelations, but maybe it's setting up Revelations for the next episode. I mean, I know they're going to leave us on a cliffhanger or two or three. There may be two or three cliffhangers from different people's story arcs of what's happening. So it opens. We got Boyd and Ellis. They're coming back from the shack, looking around for Fatima. She's not there. They're going to have to go back to town and spend the night and leave her wherever she is. So, of course, Ellis is fighting that. But also the Parkinson's thing comes up and they make it back to the sheriff's station. And, and Boyd's going to have to tell him about that. We have Donna and she's thinking back on Fatima and the light, the good vibes, the good energy that she gave to everyone. And she tells Boyd later, of course, she can't tell on Fatima because of that. But at the sheriff's station... Boyd does come clean to Ellis about the Parkinson's um, and about what happened in the barn that night and stuff and about breaking him. And he thinks the thing happening with Fatima is part of that. And it could be just like Boyd said, we don't know. We don't know. But I thought it was funny over at the window when the monster nurse shows up and Boyd, he's like, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? The look on his face is pretty good. Of course, the next morning, Sarah comes and tells about the voices that she heard that Fatima's been taken, taken by something, we don't know what or who, and that she's close, that Rooseller is pretty close to town, and that they're not going to be able to save her. So, you know, the trap door thing, you know, that comes into play a little bit with that. I'll talk about some theory stuff with that once we get to it. But going back to Sarah and hearing the voices, the little snowman thing that Kenny broke that she glued back together, I don't think has anything to do with it as far as the voices in her head. I think that just means something to Sarah because of her brother. But the voices in her head came because Elgin took Fatima and she's missing and they know Boyd's looking for her. So it's part of that messing with Boyd, trying to break Boyd. I think it's part of the bigger plan, you know, in that sense. So we're at the church with Victor and Sarah and Tabitha and Victor's like, you know, I don't want to remember anymore. He's, he's realizing what we realized, what he said last episode, he's realizing it seems like he's the cause, you know, I don't blame, blame him at all, but he's, you know, he did tell his mom what Christopher said, which made his mom leave him in the cellar and go try to make it to the tree, you know, yada, yada. So, you know, if Victor hadn't have told her, what would have happened? What would have been the outcome? That's the whole thing about, you know, are they the chosen one, Miranda and Tabitha, those guys, or is it Jade, you know, Jade, Christopher, that thing, because, you know, the reincarnation thing, whether it is exactly that, it almost seems like it's exactly that, or something very similar to reincarnation or something, but it totally, especially with this episode, it totally, you know, seems that way. But then you look at the different characters, you know, not everybody's dead. You know, we have Henry, which should be Jim, right? Miranda's husband, Henry. We have Tabitha's husband, Jim. Jim may be Henry reincarnated, but maybe not. Maybe only a few key ones like Tabitha, like Jade, maybe Victor and Ethan. You know, maybe not every single person plays a role and is reincarnated or what have you. And Tabitha has touched Victor before, I think, hugged him and stuff, been around him. But this was the first time it seemed like she got that energy of, hey, I'm Miranda. You know, that kind of feeling, that, that moment that we see a couple more times through the episode. And Julie made it to the clinic. Ethan's worried about her. He thinks it's his fault. We found that out at the diner, you know, as far as Julie tells uh, Jim and Tabitha about it. But she says she was in the woods with Randall. So Jim goes to confront Randall, and it's not a... 
hey, stay away from my daughter. It's look, she, so she's going through something and she won't talk to me and you're going through it too. You know, uh, just what's up. That's all. So I think Jim throughout this episode has done a turnaround. Like to me, you know, he was kind of an a-hole and now he just did a 360. That usually isn't good. You know, I, I didn't know if Tilly would die or not, but I did say maybe even in a video, man, she's getting a lot of screen time. And when that happened in the walking dead, you know, suddenly somebody that, you know, didn't stand out before suddenly gets kind of prominence in an episode or two, they end up dead. You know, that's just one of those things. So is Jim 360 actually a bad sign? Because I thought they were kind of, you know, at the clinic, Jim said, look, I'm with you. I support you. Julie at the table in the diner is like this little facade of a little family breakfast, you know, I know what you're doing. It ain't working. You know, so that's still a little confusing to me where everything stands and where it's going. As far as Jim and Tabitha and the kids, they're not yours anymore, Jim. And don't you love it when someone says, oh, you're not a prisoner, yet you try to leave the room and they drag you back in, you know, and lock the door and keep you in there at, like a prisoner. I mean, you know, that's kind of funny in itself. But I don't know, you know, what if Sarah did kill the boy, whether it be Victor or Ethan, whichever one it was supposed to be, maybe she kills Ethan and then it writes on her arm, wrong one, I meant Victor, you know, and she goes kill, goes and kills Victor. Do they all get to go home? No, we all think they're lying. We think the kimono lady is lying to Elgin. We think that the monsters, the entity, the evil, the boy in white, whatever is playing games with them. But they say the same thing to Tabitha. Well, you just save the children in the tower and you all get to go home. That may be a ruse just like Elgin and the kimono lady, just like Sarah. Kill the boy. You know, who's right? Who's wrong? You know, this whole place, I think Martin said it. Uh, maybe, I can't remember. Somebody said this whole place lies. So we cut back to Victor going to Colony House getting an axe like, heck yeah, I'm about to do something, yo. And Clara, I think's her name, this chick right here. Um, some people think that she has, maybe she's the mole or she has, she's evil in some kind of way. She's got something to do with something. But Acosta and Kenny together, they're becoming friends, it looks like. And I think that would, they would make a good couple now that Christy has her fiance back. You know, Christy and Kenny, they, you know, they're just alone in this Fromville, you know. And so they were liking each other, but then Marielle comes back. So Kenny, he's just alone in the world, especially after his mom died. Also, you know, bring in Acosta. She will be a good, I hope they become better friends. That's all I'm saying. I hope Acosta is kind of turning around as well. She did seem like, Hey, I'm a good cop. I'm trying to help you guys. You know, she is being honest. Like, look, I, I may be hot headed, but I want to help you guys. But Victor's about to go cut down a tree and he, you know, the acting just, Top notch, man. Dude is doing such a good job with Victor. Top notch acting. So boy goes to Donna and she's like, I'm not going to tell. And he's like, well, she's missing. And he tells her about the voices that Sarah had and all of that. And Donna's like, okay, town meeting. Let's go look for Fatima. Ring the bell, Boyd. So Jim and Tabitha, they bring the family to the diner to have some food. It's up and going again. The bus driver got it up and going which is a cool thing they need that location back it's good for kenny to see it active again i think and that's when julie tells them about ethan uh and that kind of thing but then boyd and donna form the meeting they all go outside and learn about fatima missing hey let's pair up in twos and go look for her and everybody kind of goes out so Boyd and Kenny go out and Boyd tells Kenny about the Parkinson's getting worse. Hey, I need to know you can, you know, look after the town and my family, man. And he kind of denies being sheriff, but he's going to be deputy again. So that's a good thing. And there's definitely been a father son relationship there, which is kind of special in its own way. Right. And Donna and Acosta pairs up and they have a little talk like, look, I'll tell you some stuff after, you know, we find Fatima and this stuff's over. All right. And Acosta agrees. So, you know, she's she's level headed. I think she's coming around that. Yeah, this place is crazy. And if I just ease my way into these people instead of trying to force my way, you know. So then we got Jade making his own bottle tree just to see if he can, you know, spark an idea about how to figure it out. And he sees Christopher and Jasper and the scream thing again. You know, Jasper screamed at him before. The guy with the boulder that he saw down in the root cellar turned and screamed at him. 
So, you know, what's the turning and screaming thing? Um, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good. That's all I'm saying. But then who comes around the corner? Henry. Man, Henry is so suspect to me. I know some people think about Clara. A lot of people thought about Tilly. I don't want to think it about Henry, but I'm thinking it. He's suspect to me for some reason. And, you know, he's asking about Victor and those kind of things. And I'm like, you know, he seems so real. He just seems like, yeah, you know, he he's Victor's dad. Tavitha went and got him from the real world and brought him back. Did it? Did she? You know, remember when it showed Victor in the root cellar and it was just him until he remembered he had a sister, you know, right? What if he didn't remember, he doesn't remember that his dad actually came with him too, right? What if we get shown a scene like that? Like, oh, Miranda and the kids are, you know, arriving at Frumville and there's Henry or the dad in the car also. Well, who was Henry in the real world. When the massacre happened, did a monster escape into the real world? You know, it's like my mind just goes crazy sometimes with theories. So you'll have to uh, look over some of the stuff I probably say because I think out loud as I'm talking. But Jim again, you know, he seems to be doing OK. He's really, you know, caring about Ethan. Like, look, dude, you know, it's not your fault. What happened to your sister? All this. And then Thomas comes on the radio. Ethan, man. He's, he's becoming a pretty strong kid. Nothing really scares him. He's like, yeah, that ain't Thomas. And they just walk out, you know, so that's pretty good in itself. Maybe probably going to piss off the monsters. And Julie and Tabitha pair up and they're doing some bonding as well. Julie tells her that she doesn't think it was a dream. She was really transported to some place. And what if she gets lost in that place or that world and can't come back to her body and you know, they didn't say a lot of words, but they that's what they were talking about. And then Tabitha sees one of the kids and the kids like, follow me. So the way the kid led them to the root cellar to maybe help Fatima, the kimono lady's like, nope, I'm going to grab Fatima and cover her mouth so she doesn't make any noise so they can't find her. So that makes me believe that the Ankui kids are on one side, one faction of the evil and they're playing a game or fighting or something or trying to escape from the clutches of the kimono lady, the monsters, whatever that side is. And the boy in white, is he in the middle or is he on the Ankui kid side? Have we even seen the big bad monster on the other side yet? Is the man in yellow the opposite of the boy in white as far as the boy in white? You know, I think I've talked to some people about it before that neither is good from a human point of view. But the boy in white may be the better side um, to the darker evil of the other side, the man in yellow. Because if you want to call an episode Revelations, I think the one where Victor figured out it wasn't Jasper, it was the boy in white. And the boy in white told us that origin supposedly story about telling uh, a hopeful story and fed it into the tree roots that made the faraway trees and all that kind of stuff. That seemed to be more of a reveal. The boy in white at this point juncture just said don't chop down the tree victor i tried to help you guys with christopher but that went wrong so now you're just gonna have to figure it out yourself that didn't tell us much of anything because we're at that point already we wanted the boy in white to actually tell us something but he said no i'm not going to tell you anything really except don't chop down the tree and figure it out for yourselves that was not a revelation the biggest revelation probably comes from tabitha and Miranda being the same person, feeling the same thing. You know, in the basement, Henry told Tabitha that Miranda could sense all the other chosen ones or, you know, see them. Ties into what happened to Tabitha in this episode. And Elgin probably better hope the monsters get him or something. Ellis probably kicked that butt if he finds out, once he finds out. I don't know if he got skeptical because of all the talking that Elgin was doing. Like, I'm, you seem a little suspicious, dude. But Fatima, of course, finds the trap door to something. Is it just a hole in the ground with something in there or where you can hide? Or is there another dead body? Or does it lead to a tunnel like the tunnels under the house that Tabitha dug down to? I'm thinking that trap door may tie into the tunnels, but we'll see. Is something going to come out of there? Will they be able to go in there? Is it tunnels or is it just a hole in the ground? But then, like I say, the revelation, the biggest thing that probably was shown to us is that Tabitha is getting the energy of Miranda and feeling 
I know it seems like she's seeing it in her mind, but is she actually feeling the emotions of Miranda as well? You know, there is an argument to say, was it Eloise? Was Tabitha Eloise? But I just don't think it holds up once you start playing it out. There's just too many holes in that. It it totally fits better as Tabitha being Miranda and seeing Miranda's death um, because Victor was talking about it and going through it. He remembered it. So maybe it took Victor to remember it for Tabitha to get that energy or, or whatever it is. But as far as that ending, explaining the ending of the episode, the kimono lady clearly knew they were out there, Victor and Tabitha, or Tabitha is coming, and told Fatima to be quiet. Like, put it, you know, she did the finger over the lip, shh, first, and then put her hand over her, uh, Fatima's mouth, like, hey, you need to be quiet. And the reincarnation theory sure does seem like it's in full play by what happened to Tabitha getting that energy, even if it's from Victor or not. It seems like when she gets around Victor, when she got around the uh, root cellar where that happened, where the, the last hug of the kids, I love you guys, and ran off. Of course, then Eloise ran out. We don't know what happened to her still. Victor said that she was good at hiding seek, so she may still be hiding somewhere. Or the monsters, some have the theory that the monsters have Eloise in the caves, and that was the tea party that was set up, the table and everything, and why the monsters may even bring stuff in there is for Eloise. So that's what I'm saying. There's still so many theories out there. There's still so many unanswered questions. I don't think there was a big revelation in this episode. Um, maybe you guys can let me know if you saw something or think there is or there's more to something that I explained. I'd definitely like to hear your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. And you know I'll join you there. This is James and as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more dead stuff.